Hi, Tom here with this week's podcast, and today I want us to focus on a passage of Scripture that I'm sure you've heard a number of seri- uh, sermons on in the past. It comes from Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 15. It says, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are just lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I would vomit you out of my mouth. Those are really strong words, and those are the words that the Lord asked John the Revelator, or told John the Revelator, to take to the church at Laodicea. Most of us have heard a lot of sermons based on this passage, and uh, based on those sermons, what are your thoughts? Is, Is hot, is that good, or is it bad? Is cold, is cold good or bad? And what about lukewarm? Is lukewarm good or bad? What if you had to rate those three in terms of the number one being uh, the, the best and, and so on down to number three? Well, usually we put hot. Hot's the only good option here. Cold, it's bad, but you know what? It's not as bad as being lukewarm because we already see in this passage of Scripture that lukewarm is going to get a spit out of the Lord's mouth. Really, is that what God's saying? Is God telling us, in fact, that he would rather that we had absolutely nothing at all to do with him, that we didn't care about his word or his promises to us, that he would rather us be that way than to be at least somewhat interested in in wanting to have a relationship with God? I recently heard yet another sermon on this, this passage, and it really did challenge the way I view this. And to fully understand the the perspective here, you have to go to the book of maps in the Bible. That's the one after Revelation, according to the back of your Bible usually. And uh, take a look at where Laodicea is located. Uh, Laodicea is located between two other cities, and they were both noted for their water supply. One of them had water that came from uh, natural springs, and it was mineral waters. It was used for mineral baths. They were It was a hot uh, source, a hot uh, spring. And, and uh, people loved it. It was very refreshing for them to, to be able to, uh, relaxing, to, to be able to take a, a bath in these spring waters. The other one was at the base of a mountain that had ice cold spring water, and it was just very refreshing to drink. Now, Laodicea's water supply, it wasn't so good. So here's what they tried to do. They, they built an aqueduct, a pipeline system that would take water from both of those cities and bring it to Laodicea. They thought they could enjoy the best of both worlds. Problem is, the only material they had to work with to build those aqueducts was clay. Clay gets hot when it goes through a hot region. That's a hot region of the world. And by the time that water reached its destination in Laodicea, the, uh, the mineral waters were putrid. They smelled bad. And it was not very uh, relaxing to try and bathe in that stuff. The water that came from the other city, the supposedly ice-cold spring waters from the base of the mountain, not so refreshing anymore. It had had also heated up in those aqueducts, and by the time it got there, it was putrid. It just, they didn't want to drink it, so they'd spit it out of their mouths. So how do you measure your temperature? Um, How do you compare yourself? In fact, I think a lot of times this is really, it's a great message on comparing ourselves to others. Maybe you admire someone else for what they do in the kingdom of God. You know, you uh, oftentimes comparisons can lead to some self-condemnation, uh, feelings of shame. You know, you, you'd say things to yourself like, oh, I wish I could be on fire like so-and-so. Um, you know, I'm not as intense as John. I must just be lukewarm. Uh, God probably just wants to spit me out of his mouth. Well, for our purposes, I want us to consider uh, our temperature as it applies to the times that we have in prayer with the Lord. You know, I'm privileged to have been able to pray with just about every one of you. In fact, I think I have prayed with every one of you uh, that's a volunteer here at Direct Line Prayer Center. And I want to tell you this, that uh, each one of you has a unique and a beautiful way of approaching the Lord. Uh, You have your own style, your own approach. And I found something to admire in everybody's approach to God. So there are times, though, that I've heard uh, people say to themselves, or maybe out loud they've said, Wow, I love the way so-and-so prays. They're just on fire. I wish I could pray like them. I wish I could be that eloquent in prayer. Um, I've always said this. I've always said that I'd much rather have uh, effective results of prayer than a pretty prayer or an eloquent prayer. Um, So we we do compare ourselves to each other. And the underlying message, I think, when we do is I feel inadequate. I, I just, I'm not confident in praying Uh, with other people, in front of other people. Uh, I just, 
Sometimes I just don't feel good about that. But what I would believe that the Lord would say to all of this is this. He says, I love you. I love the way you are right now. I love the way that you approach my throne. Just keep coming. Just keep approaching. Don't delay. Don't hesitate. Keep on coming to the, the throne of God, the throne of grace. God's word tells us that we are to approach his throne boldly to obtain grace and mercy, to help in our time of need. And that's the real key, is to just approach God, just to, to come after him and to not withhold anything. Don't hold yourself back with the thought that, uh, that you can't pray as eloquently as somebody else. Uh, I just, I, like I said, as I pray with each one of you, I have uh, seen a lot to admire in the way that you approach God and the love that you have for him and the love that he has for you. So keep on coming to the throne room of God. God bless you.